All right, in this video, we want to talk about routes and pages. So when we were setting up our project, we went through this server side setup. And at the very bottom of this page, we have creating responses or pages. And in this page, we have this Laravel block of code that is just returning a view, but instead of a blade view, they are using inertia and then the function render. So this is basically the same as what we did in our web.php. So let's open that document in our project. So in here, we are using the inertia helper function, but we could also use inertia itself. So it needs to be imported and then call the render a static method on that, which would take the name of the component. So again, back to our website, we get the same thing. Now you notice here, all we have to do is to pass the name of the component. So not the relative path or the extension. And that's because in our app.jsx, when we created our inertia app, we used this resolve option. And that is basically a function that would take a name and it would look for it in this directory. And we created that home page inside our pages folder. And that's why we don't have to say, for example, resources, JS, and then pages. We just have to pass the name of the component. Now let's say, we have another page within another folder. So inside the pages folder, I'm gonna create a new folder and let's call it about. And within that, I will have an about.gsx component. So this is just for practice. We are not going to keep it. And let's create our function and also export it at the same time. So I'm gonna say about and just return an H1 that says about page. And I'm gonna add the class title to this one too. Now let's create a route for it. So we already know how to do this using Laravel. We can call our route facade and for instance, use one of the HTTP methods. In this case, we want to call the get method. Then we can pass our URI. So let's say forward slash about and then a closure that would return our component. So again, with Laravel, we would just say return a view and that would take a blade view. But now we want to use the inertia to return one of our front end application views. So up here we used inertia render, but let's use the inertia helper function again and just pass the name of the component. Now this time our about page is inside another folder. So we can say about, which is our folder and then our component without the extension. So about forward slash about, and let's end this statement. Maybe I should have named that folder something else because this is a bit confusing. But anyway, if we go back to our website and go to forward slash about, we see our text. So if we have folders within our pages folders, then we need to mention them in our return statement. Otherwise, it's just going to be the name of the component if it is directly under the pages folder. So again, I'm gonna delete this one. This is just to show how we can call pages within folders. So let's delete this whole folder as well. And let's just stay with the home page. Now with Laravel, we also have other functions that are available on the route facade, such as view, that is kind of a shorthand for this get method. So sometimes you just have a simple view with some simple data that you want to render and you don't want to use this closure. So you don't need all of this. Therefore, you would use the view function that would take a blade component. Now, similar to view, we have inertia that can be called directly on the route facade. So this would take the URI, in this case, we want to go to the homepage, then the name of the component for us again is homepage. So this line of code is the same as what we have up here. If I comment this out and end this statement, go back to our website, let's go back to the homepage, we get our text, but this is much cleaner. Let's bring back this one and see how we can send data to our component. So this render function takes the name of the component as the first argument and the props as the second argument. So we need to pass an array here that would be our props. Again, much like Laravel, this is how we would send data to our blade components. And with inertia, we have exactly the same thing. We are just calling it props. So let's say I have a name property and I just want to call it Mike and I want to grab this prop in my React component. So now let's open our home.jsx and accept that name as a prop. So inside these parentheses, I'm gonna use the curly brackets and just say, I'm expecting a name. So instead of hello user, I want to use that dynamic name. So I can just use it down here. And if we go back to our website, now we see that text. 
So you can see how easy it is to just send data from our Laravel backend application to our React application just by using Inertia.js. And I think this is a great solution because we can still use Laravel routes and we don't need to use the React router and we can have all the functionality in our backend application that is communicating with our database and we just send the data to the front end application. And as we build our application, we will talk more about routes and sending or receiving data data from our components. But that's it for this video. In the next video, we want to create a layout file that would be shared among all the other components. So that would be our navigation.